Hello everyone, welcome back. So in last video lecture, we have discussed the process of megasporogenesis, right? So we have seen uh, how the female gametophyte is developed. So we have discussed the process of megasporogenesis, that is embryo sex. So we have discussed how the female gametophyte is developed, that is embryo sex. So we have discussed the process and you know the structure, right? So, so far we have seen the structure of flower, the enter, microsporogenesis, and then megasporogenesis, then we have discussed pollination, right? So now we will discuss fertilization. So male is ready, female ready, pollination has taken place. No, no, now what will happen? The fertilization will take place. So in this topic, we will discuss the process of fertilization. So today we will discuss fertilization. It is fusion of male and female gamete. Okay. All right. So first, you need to know is the basic things. Who first discovered fertilization? You need to remember that scientist's name. Fertilization was first discovered by a scientist known as Strauss Barger. Okay, remember this name. So fertilization was first discovered by Strauss Barger. All right. Now we will discuss the process of fertilization. That is fusion of male and female gamete. Okay, in details. We will discuss first step we will go step by step okay first what happened first step step number one so pollen grain is ready now it is carried out by the pollination into the female body and the female body where the embryo site is developed okay so first step one what happened in step one there will be interaction of pollen grains that is our male gamete with pistil okay the first step is interaction of pollen grains with pistil a pistil means that is the female reproductive structure that consists of stigma style and ovary we know right the topmost part is stigma so first what happened the stigma will recognize the correct type of pollen grains whether it is a correct type or not whether pollen grains are fully mature or not all right whether the pollen grains are of same species or not same species or not so first thing what happened the stigma of pistil will recognize the correct type of pollen grains whether it is of same species or not if it is only if of same species then only the stigma will allow to enter inside the body okay so first thing what happened suppose let me draw this diagram suppose this is stigma and then we have style and we have ovary right so i'm just doing a rough diagram so first step what happened the pollen grains will come and bind at the stigma region So suppose this is our pollen grains. The pollen grains will come and bind at the stigma region and we have two cell. One is vegetative cell and one is generative cell. Okay. <clears throat> the stigma, what, what they will do? They will first recognize the pollen grains, whether the pollen grains is correct type or not, whether it is of same species or not. If it is if this pollen grain is not of same species then they will not let the pollen grains to enter into the body okay if it is of same species and it is fully mature and correct type then only it will enter into their body the stigma will allow pollen grains to enter into their body okay this is our first step understood so there will be interaction of pollen grains with pistil the stigma will recognize the correct type of pollen grains whether it is of same species or not if it is of same species then only the stigma will allow the pollen grains to enter into their body understood this is our okay step number one the step number two what happened so suppose this is the stigma has found that the pollen grains are of correct type suppose 
now what they will do the stigma will secrete water and sugars okay they will secrete water and sugar if it is of correct pollen grains the stigma will secrete water and sugar and that water and sugar will absorb by pollen grains to make it slippery okay so that they can pass through inside the body understood so next step is secretion of water and sugar by stigma so our next step is secretion of water and sugar by stigma okay now stigma will secrete water and sugars which will absorb by the pollen grains to make it slippery and it will enter inside the body of the piston okay so next thing this is our step number two now step number three what happened after absorption of water and sugars by pollen grains now finally there will be a germination of pollen tube germination of germination of pollen tube will take place so germination of pollen tube pollen tube is the tube structure that arises from the pollen grains which is done by a cell inside the pollen grain so there are two types of nucleus one is vegetative which is small and one is generative which is a bigger as compared to vegetative what is the function of generative cell the function of generative cell it takes part in reproduction process right we have discussed what is the function of generative cell here oh, sorry what is the function of generative cell generative cell it takes part in the process of reproduction and what is the function of vegetative cell vegetative cell which is small as compared to the generative cell the vegetative cell help in the formation of pollen tube right so next what happened a pollen tube will develop emerges out from the pollen grains and it will enter into the body of pistil okay so from that part a pollen tube emerges out let me make it big diagram okay let me make it big so that you can understand i'm just drawing this stigma style and over it so there we have pollen grains the pollen grains has two layer we have already seen the inner layer is known as intine the outer layer is known as exine exine is made up of sporopollenin which is a resistance extremely resistant substance in the living wall it is unbreakable right so inside we have two cell one is bigger in size known as vegetative cell so regenerative cell and one is smaller in size known as vegetative cell so generative cell that means that cell will take part in the process of reproduction the function we have discussed again okay the, the vegetative cell help in the formation of pollen tube right so next step what happened the generative cell okay sorry the vegetative cell will form the pollen tube okay they will form a pollen tube and that pollen tube will enter into the body of pistil okay a pollen tube emerges out through the germ spore there is a space between two, those two structure there is a space between exine from that space the pollen tube will emerges out and it will enter into the body of female reproductive structure okay why for germ pores because the exines are extremely resistant substance because it is made up of sporopollenin so it is unbreakable so a pollen tube will emerges out through that spaces between the exine so the, so next what happened the pollen tube will emerges out and it will enter into the body of pistil okay so this is our third step germination of pollen tube so germination of pollen tube is done by vegetative cell a pollen tube emerges out from the pollen grains through the germ spore and it will enter into the body of female reproductive structure that is pistil okay all right this is our step number three now step number four what happened next step so there will be a growth of 
pollen tube. <clears throat> the pollen tube will grow to its length. Okay, the pollen tube will grow. There we have ovary. The pollen tube will grow to its length and it will come down the filament. So red color here I am drawing that is our pollen tube. Now inside the, this is our ovary. So inside the ovary we have ovule where our embryo psych is produced, right? So let me draw the embryo uh, ovule. So this is our ovule. It is pitechmid. That means it has two integument. The ovule is fully mature. So embryocyte, that is our female reproductive structure, is already formed here, which is ready for the fertilization. So we have seen this structure in a last video lecture. So the embryocyte has two polar nuclei at the middle, three antiportal cells at the upper region, and then two synergic cells, and the middle one is the egg cell, right? That is the structure that we have. So now what happened? The pollen tube will grow to its size and it will enter through the mycopylar region. So upper region is called as Wachala jar, right? We have discussed the lower region is known as micropyle. So next what happened? Let me again make it big. Make it let me make it big. So next what happened? The pollen tube will grow. It will grow and it will come down towards the micropylar region. It will grow and it will come down towards the micropylar region and will enter into the embryo sac. Before that, we need to know once the pollen tube grow and it enters into the female reproductive structure, the pollen tube is done by the growth of pollen tube is done by which cell? Vegetative cell, right? So vegetative cell helps in the development of pollen tube. Now what happened to generative cell? Now once the pollen tube grows and enters into the female body, the generative cell will enter into the female body, right? The generative cell will enter along with the tube inside the female body. As soon as the generative cell enters into the female body, one cell divides into two male gametes. okay? That one generative cell once they enter into the female body, it divides into two male gametes. So along with the tube, the male gamete will calm down along with the pollen tube, okay? It will calm down. Now again, one more point you need to know. Once the pollen tube is developed and coming down through the pollen tube, as soon as they calm down, a callous plug is formed. A callous plug is formed. Callous plug. The structure is known as callous plug. It is a plug like substances which blockades the pathway of two male gametes. So that the two male gametes do not go back from where they have come from. Okay. So they blockades the pathway of two male gametes. Once they enter, they have to come down through the pollen tube. Okay. They cannot go back from where they have come from. That's why a callous plug is formed. So the male gamete, the two male gamete will travel down and when they travel down a callous plug is formed simultaneously. So two male gamete, a callous plug, again they will come down, so a callous plug is formed. When they travel, when they pass through to the, uh, along with the pollen tube, along with male, two male gamete, a callous plug is formed. So they blockage the pathway of two male gametes, so they do not go back from where they have come from. Okay. So they prevent the backflow of two pollen, uh, two male gametes. Okay. Understood. The next, what happened? So let me revise again. So the generative cell, once they enter into the female body, they divide into two male gametes. The two male gametes, along with the pollen tube, they will travel down. 
Once the when they travel down along with it, the callus plug is formed simultaneously, which prevent the backflow of two melgamine. Okay, so they will come down and it will enter towards the micropylar region, not towards the chalazalar region. So it will enter towards the micropylar region. In most angiospermic plant, the fertilization takes place towards the micropylar region. Okay, we are discussing the angiospermic plant. In most angiospermic plant. The pollen tube which enters is towards the micropylar region and that process is known as porogamy. Remember, some extra thing that you need to know. Porogamy. What is porogamy? The pollen tube which enters towards the micropylar region of embryo sac are known as porogamy. Okay, in some plants, the pollen tube enters towards the chalazal region. In that case is known as chalazogamy. Okay, but in this case, in most angiospermic plant, the pollen tube enters towards the micropylar region. Understood? That is the process. Now, what happened next? So, this is our fourth step: growth of pollen tube. What happened in growth of pollen tube? The vegetative cell help in the formation of pollen tube. The pollen tube will emerge from the pollen grains through the germ pores and it will enter into the female body. Okay, and it will grow and it will and, and enters towards the micropylar region of the ovule. The next cell that is our generative cell when they enter into the female body, the one cell divides into two male gamete. So the male gamete will travel, will come down with the help of pollen tube towards the micropylar region. And when they travel, callus plug is formed simultaneously which prevent the backflow of two male gametes so that it do not goes back from where they have come from okay so next what happened so the pollen tube <coughs> the pollen tube it will enters towards the micropylar region of the embryo in embryo we have two cells I'm not labeling the name again. We have seen in last video lectures, so you know. So uh, in embryo, at the lower region, towards the chala, uh, sorry, towards the micropylar region, we have two synergid cell and one egg cell. Two synergid cell and one egg cell, right? When the pollen tube and come in contact with ovule towards the micropylar region, one of the synergid cell ruptures try to understand we have two synergid cell when the pollen tube come in contact with the ovule one of the synergid cell ruptures okay and that rupture cells guided the pollen tube to enter into the embryo site okay understood one of the synergid cell ruptures and the guide that rupture cell guide the pollen tube to enter into the embryo cell. Whatever the structure we have inside, we call it the embryo cell. And that overall structure is ovule. Okay, don't get confused. Whatever the structure that is inside all those structure, we call it as an embryo cell, which is our female gametophyte. And whatever the structure we have, all those that is ovule. Now, when the pollen tube come in contact with the ovule towards the micropylar region. One of the synergy cell get ruptures and that rupture cell guide the uh, pollen tube to enter into the embryo cell. Okay. Understood? One of the synergy cell, suppose this synergy got ruptures, and that rupture cell will guide the pollen tube to enter into the embryo cell along with the two male gamete. Okay, then the two male gamete of the next step we have. What happened? The two male gamete. Step number five. Now here the actual. Okay, let me write at the top. Let let me wrap this one. Now next step, the actual fertilization will take place. Step number five. The actual fertilization will take place. Fertilization. So we have two male gamete. It release inside the embryo cell, right? So one male gamete, what happened? One male gamete fuses with the egg to form zygote. One male gamete fuses with the egg 
to form zygote and the other milkmaid fuses with the two polar nuclei to form endosperm which is a nutritive tissue it gives nutrition to the developing embryo okay so two two male gamete which is coming with inside uh, with the help of pollen tube inside once they enter into the body of embryo sac one male gamete fuses with the egg to form zygote and another male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei to form endosperm which give nutrition to the developing embryo so fertilization will take place understood so what happened in fertilization one male gamete fuses okay with egg to form zygote which is diploid zygote and later will give rise to embryo we will discuss in our next topic so one male gamete fuses with the egg to form zygote so one male gamete one male gamete fuses with egg to form zygote and another male gamete that is our second male gamete the first male gamete fuses with the egg to form zygote and the second let me write here first okay first male gamete let me write first male gamete so that you you don't get confused so first male gamete fuses with the egg to form zygote and the second male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei right these two polar nuclei which is at the middle so we call two polar nuclei it fuses with two polar nuclei to form primary nuclear endosperm primary nuclear endosperm remember and that process is called as triple fusion and that process is called as triple fusion remember question always ask very important what is triple fusion this year also it came in your final exam what is triple fusion when second male gamete fuses with two polar nuclei to form primary nuclear endosperm the process is known as triple fusion okay it produces primary nuclear endosperm which is a nutritive tissue it gives nutrition to the developing embryo okay you can write it gives it is a nutritive tissue which gives nutrition to the developing embryo which provides nutrition to the developing embryo and that process is known as triple fusion very important so next what happened in fertilization so once the pollen tube enters into the female embryo sac along with the two male gamete one of the synergic cell ruptures and that rupture cells will guide the pollen tube to enter into the embryo sac okay so out of those two male gamete first male gamete fuses with the egg to form a zygote zygote will later give rise to embryo we will see in next topic okay which is diploid and a second male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei to form a primary nuclear endosperm which is a nutritive tissue it provides nutrition to the developing embryo and that process is known as triple fusion okay remember now the first male gamete which fuses with the egg and the second male gamete which fuses with two polar nuclei these two process are called as double fertilization understood the overall process are called as double fertilization what is double fertilization when first male gamete fuses with the egg to form a zygote and the second male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei to form a primary nuclear endosperm the process is known as double fertilization and double fertilization was first discovered by a scientist known as Nawaz Chin Nawaz Chin okay it was first discovered by scientists known as Nawaz Chin in a plant in a plant lilium and fritillaria lilium and fritillaria so remember from entrance point of view and sometimes the question asks double fertilization triple fertilization remember so this is the overall process of fertilization understood so your your answer should be with respect to the diagram diagram is very important if this question come it come for five marks okay depending on the marks so diagram 
is very important. So draw your diagram on the right side of your paper and write your notes on the left side of it with respect to the diagram, okay? Once you understand the diagram, you will understand. You don't have to memorize all those things, okay? Just remember the step. What happened? First step, there will be a interaction of pollen and pistil, okay? The pistil, that is female reproductive structure, it first recognize the pollen grains, okay? It will, it will first recognize the correct type of pollen grains whether the pollen grains are of same species or not, whether the pollen grains are fully mature or not, okay? So if it is of correct type, the next step what happen? They will secrete waters and sugars. And that water and sugars will absorb by pollen grains, okay? And then they will become slippery and then, then you will enter into the female reproductive structure, okay? The third step. So then there will be a growth of pollen tube. So growth of pollen tube is done by uh, vegetative cell and the pollen tube will emerges out from uh, the pollen grains through the germ pores and it will enters into the female reproductive structure right the next is growth of pollen tube the pollen tube will grow to its length and it will enter towards the micropylar region of the ovule and when the pollen tube grows the uh, degenerative cell will develop into two male gametes and it will travel along with the pollen tube and when the male gamete is formed, along with that, a callous plug is formed simultaneously. So that it prevents the backflow of two male gametes. Okay. So when the next third step, uh, fourth step, that is growth of pollen tube, then then fertilization will take place. So in fertilization, what happens? Once the pollen tube come in contact with the female embryo sac or ovule, one of the synergy cell ruptures, and that rupture cell guide the pollen tube it, to enter inside the body of the embryo sac okay now then what happened the first male gamete fuses with the egg cell to form the zygote and the second male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei to form a primary nuclear endosperm which is a nutritive tissue which gives nutrition to the developing embryo the process is known as triple fusion okay triple fusion and the overall process is known as double fertilization which was discovered by Nawasin in a plant called Lilium and Fritillaria. Okay, so remember what is triple fusion? What is double fusion? The, oh, sorry, double fertilization. What is triple fusion? What is double fertilization? And the overall process of fertilization. And the fertilization was first discovered by Strasberger, a scientist name. So, this is the overall process of fertilization. So, next we will discuss the development of embryo from zygote in, in next video lecture.